Hi friends, here is Lucas. This is a free lesson from my best-selling course about Kotlin coroutines and flow for Android development. You can find the link in the description to get the course for a nice discount. In this lecture, you are now going to learn how to create new flows from scratch by using one of the many available flow builders. So let's directly jump into a new playground file to play around with the most basic flow builders. I already created a new package in our flow playground called builders and in there I created the first file. Now, one of the most basic flow builders is flow off. So let's create our first flow with this builder. Ok, there is a problem. The error message, not enough information to infer type variable t, is displayed. This means that the compiler doesn't know which type the flow should emit. So let's explicitly define that this is a flow that will emit integer values. Ok, perfect. Now the error is gone. So the compiler now knows that we plan to emit integer values. And now we can, for instance, emit the single value by passing only a single value to the flow of builder. So let's pass the integer value of 1 as a parameter. Great, we have created our first simple flow that will emit the integer value of 1. But how can we observe our new flow now? This can be done by calling a special operator, a terminal operator on the flow. One such terminal operator is the collect operator. Of course, we will cover terminal operators in much more details later in this course. But for now, all you need to know is that you can call the terminal operator collect on the flow in order to observe the items that are emitted by our newly created flow. Collect expects a lambda function. And for this lambda function, the emitted value of the flow is the only input parameter. Let's just print out the emitted value in the lambda itself. Again, the IDE shows an error now. This is because collect is a suspend function, so we have to either call it from another suspend function or a coroutine. We will later talk about why collect is a suspend function. But for now, Let's simply use the coroutine builder run blocking for the main function in order to create a new coroutine. From the coroutine that is started with run blocking, we can now call the suspend function collect and so the compiler is happy. You know what? Actually, there is also another option instead of using run blocking here. Since Kotlin 1.3, it is possible to directly define the main function as a suspend function. So if the main function is already a suspend function, we actually don't need to create a new coroutine by ourselves anymore. So we can safely remove the run blocking coroutine builder again. Defining the main function as a suspend function is more or less the same as having a regular main function together with run blocking. However, I think that having main as a suspend function makes these small examples a little bit shorter and nicer. Alright, let's run the main function now. And as you can see, as expected, we have created our first flow that emits a single value, 1, 
and with collect we can observe this value and in the collect lambda we receive this value and we print out this value and as you can see on the right in the console this first value the value of 1 is printed out. Now instead of only passing a single value we can also pass multiple values because there is also an overload of the flow of builder available that takes a variable amount of arguments. As you can see, this time we don't actually need to declare the flow type, since the compiler can infer the type from the values that we passed. And since they are all integers, it knows that this is a flow that emits integer values. However, Sometimes it's still useful to explicitly define the type anyway, in order to make it more obvious about what type this flow emits. So let's do this here as well. Of course, if we define a flow that emits integer values, we can't simply pass values of other types, like a string for instance, to the builder. If we would do that, you can see that the compiler shows an error. In this case, we of course could change the emitted type of the flow to any in order to fix this error. But then we would lose the type safety. So let's stick to the integer flow. If we now collect the flow again, and print out the emitted values and then run this code again. You can see that for the second flow, actually three items are emitted, three values are emitted and for each item we call the print statement. In the console you can see that we have this print statement three times. Another very simple way to create flows is to use the sflow extension function. We can call it on collections like lists or sequences. So let's now simply create a list of three strings. And by using the sflow extension function, we can convert this list into a flow. Let's now again collect the emitted values and print them out. If we now run this code again, you can now see the sflow extension function in action. And what we did here is we converted the list of the three strings ABC into a flow, we collected them and then for each emitted value we print out S flow and the emitted value and you can see that the three letters ABC were printed out on the console. The two builders that we have used so far, namely flow off and the extension function S flow, are great. However, they are not really flexible. They simply convert a single value or multiple values into a flow. A flow builder that is much more flexible is flow. This builder takes a suspendable lambda block, which means that we can call regular and suspend functions in there. So in the lambda, Let's first call the suspend function delay and pass 2000 milliseconds to it. Now if we want to emit a new value, we can simply call the emit function. Let's emit a new string with the value item emitted after 2000 milliseconds. And now let's again collect from the flow and print out the emitted values.
And if we run this code now again, you can see that after a two second delay, the string that we have defined is received and printed out. So with this flow builder, we are very flexible because we can pass arbitrary code blocks that emit values to it. We can even collect from other flows in the past block and re-emit its item. So let's now collect from our second flow, the one that we created earlier, and for each emission, we simply re-emit the value. So let's run this code again. And as you can see, with the flow builder, we can collect other flows. So here we collect the second flow and basically re-emit re all the emissions of the second flow. And so we re-emit and print out all the values of the second flow. Actually, there is a shorthand for this kind of collect and emit construct, which is emit all. So instead of calling collect and then re-emitting the value, we can simply use emit all. This does the same as before, but is much more concise. Of course, there are also more complex flow builders like callback flow or channel flow. But in this lecture, since we are only starting our flow learning journey, I wanted to only focus on the most simple one. So to summarize this lecture, let's have a look at this table that shows the flow builders that we have used in this lesson. At first, we have used the flow of builder, which creates a flow from a fixed set of values. Then we use the sflow extension function, which can be called on various types in order to convert them into flows. Last but not least, we used the flow builder flow, which is the most flexible one because it's a, it's a builder function to construct arbitrary flows from sequential calls to the emit function. So if you want to dive deeper into coroutines and flow, then I can highly recommend my complete course that contains everything to fully understand and successfully use coroutines and flow in your apps. We will together create a stock live tracking app that uses flow extensively. You will also learn about state flows, shared flows, channels, and many, many other topics. You can find a link to the course in the description and I would love to have you on board.